This demo is with Mango Release 3.2.2 and I'm going to discuss some of the updates of existing features and several newer features. In terms of updates under Open Image, we now support the fMRI style images from the software called Stimulate. The Mink 1 and Mink 2 images uh, from Montreal Neurological Institute. The eCat PET images from the Siemens PET Imager, as well as several forms of DICOM specific to MRI and PET. We've, we have an open raw image dialog for those that don't find their style in, as inputable, and basically you fill out this form and hopefully open your image. We've added a trailer here to help support that. There is now a sample image uh, so that you don't have to find an image to begin using Mango. We've added several features to the mouse right button. If you press the right mouse button, move up and down, you get brightness control, left and right contrast. We also, for the orthogonal viewer, and this is an orthogonal viewer, uh, we have what, what's referred to as the wide view which is the one we're looking at, and the taller view. Uh, I'm going to work for the tall view a little bit, but I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to switch images to illustrate something. I'm going to zoom this image a little bit, and then pan it up to center it. In particular, we want to look at uh, histogram changes. I want the histogram large enough to see. So the, we've, we've set up the image display to go from 0 to 4,000. That's automatically passed along to the histogram <clears throat> analysis. And what I want to illustrate is auto binning. And we're going to change the range here because we have a lot of blank space up at the top of our histogram, or practically blank. I'm going to set it some other number, which still looks good in the image, changes it here, calculate. So if we don't use auto binning, we have to pick the proper number of bins. If we pick too few, we get something like that. You can pick a lot more, and sometimes it works quite nicely to pick more. Uh, you get a finer detail. Other times we get some little spiky looking things in here. So we're going to leave it in auto binning mode. So the, the Highlight pointer as we move back and forth in the histogram hasn't, hasn't changed particularly until you select a point or anchor it. And notice now we have little grabbers on each end so that we can adjust the range in this fashion. And we can extend the range in a similar way as what, what we once did. So if you set the anchor and shift click someplace else, that sets the other side of the range. You can also drag the range around like we always did. So we're going to select this, this range as red. And notice there's no color icon here anymore. The color icon is the system color icon now to be consistent across all, all of our applications. And we'll select that as green. So that's roughly gray matter. And we'll skip over here to this gold looking color. Select that. And you can see what we've highlighted the ranges. Based upon the ranges here, we've highlighted corresponding locations in the image. And now we have a single Generate ROI button. If I click it, you see it generating the red, the green, and the gold. We can clear everything off here. <coughs> if you like this histogram and you wanted to save it for some reason, uh, we used to have a text save. Now we've changed it to an icon, so it's still there. I'm going to close the histogram now, move this back to the top. And since I want some space down below, I'm going to change the view back to wide. So in this image, we now have three regions of interest, a red, green, and a blue one, and a red, green, and gold, sorry. And I'm going to move the red one back to the top. Uh, we could have put the green one on the top. Let's put the red one on the top. Now we're somewhat ordered in terms of the way the colors were ordered in the palette. There are eight colors in this palette, and their numbers, their starting names, are their order in the palette. The next feature I want to show you is a new, sort of new feature, uh, at least in release 3.2, uh, 
uh, its pop-up menu, pressing the right mouse button while cursor is positioned over the region, brings up a little pop-up menu, and we're going to look at both the analysis or analyze part and edit label part today. And since I'm in white matter, we'll edit this label and we'll call it white matter. And notice the change down here. And we'll go to a gray matter region by pointing. And we'll edit this label to gray matter. And CSF. Now we have more meaningful labels by tissue type. Uh, if you save this file, this ROI file as an ROI, and we'll point and load it back as an ROI, it'll have these label names corresponding to the colored regions you see here. We can also use this pop-up menu to do what's called fast analysis. So if I click in here and analyze, I'm, I, I can analyze the region where I'm pointing. I'll open this up a little bit more. Uh, so if I'm pointing at what I'm sure is white matter or what I'm sure is something else, we can analyze it uh, by just pointing and clicking. Now certainly the old style was to highlight it first, then you can analyze it or highlight everything and get it at once. And well, that's still useful as you'll see in a moment. But here being able to point and then analyze is a nice feature. <coughs> so in terms of the colors, uh, let's go back over here to this palette. Notice we have two options under this palette to edit the color labels. So I could enter them by pointing and clicking, but I could have entered them this here just as well. And you can edit them. Notice, come, come down here when you select it. It brings it to the top of the list. White matter is to the top. Gray matter is to the top. CSF. Now we're bringing things to the top of the list based upon their label. <coughs> Excuse me. So we won't use that right away, but you might find that helpful in some studies. The other uh, option in the color palette is to add more colors. Mango now supports up to 64 colors and correspondingly 64 ROIs. Each time you pick to add more colors, it doubles the capability. So we went from 8 to 16, 16 to 32, and now here's all 64. I'm picking this because I want to illustrate some other uses. Uh, so we're going to put in uh, a couple of other kinds of regions, uh, ROIs. Let's pick one as, as blue and come down here to paint mode. So we can paint something in here kind of like that. And paint in here kind of like that. And the quick toggle out of this paint mode is to F key. That's the way I set it up on mine. And notice this region label is now color 27 of 64 because we're in 64 color mode. Uh, but I can give it a better label. And since it's in white matter, we'll give it white matter, but it's non-specific, we'll call it blobs. Okay, so the label now makes at least some sense in terms of what we have there. Let's pick another color. Um, we'll pick one that's kind of maybe a little brownish and we're going to trace a line and we can trace a line from up here well, maybe to down here hit return to close the line F to take us back to pointer mode and we can point at either endpoint to select it and we can put a label on this line and we'll just call this the AP line okay and his name is showing up up here. It's a little bit hard to see with the color table we have, but it's definitely there. And if you grab the end of it, select it. You can move it around a little, little more. Maybe see, see the name better there, but I'm going to keep it up in here for now. Okay. Uh, and we try to highlight it so it is visible. And then the last region we're going to put on is going to be points. Now we'll pick some color, something like this. Go down here to where points are. And let's switch to sort of somewhere back in here for points. And we'll put a point here, put a point here. And key to get out of points. And I'll hit C to go to the center the brain and now the problem is where are the points 
if you don't remember where the points were, and they could be randomly oriented throughout the brain, it's fairly hard to navigate to them. Uh, so we have added this other feature called ROI Inspector, which allows you to navigate to any of the current regions. So these are the regions we've generated. And they're categorized by lines and regions and points. And under points, we have two points. Here's one on the left, one on the right. And we'll look at them in this mode. And so we can enter a label. We'll call this left point. And the other right point. So now we have all of the regions positioned and labeled. And we know where they are. I'm going to come down here and select everything down here, maybe. And then clear it. And we've selected everything up here. And this is the traditional way for getting uh, analysis of many regions. Uh, select everything. And then go to Audit Statistics for Regions. And now we see all the region analysis there. We can deselect things by clicking outside. And we'll do the image statistics as well. So we have a complete listing of what we can do statistics here. And now I'd like to uh, go over some of the changes in the statistics window. Uh, under description, you now see the color and the label for region in the the image itself is called volume. We may allow you to put an image name there later, but it's not all that important at this stage. In the viewer, it's basically the name of the file that you open uh, for view. In the image, it, unless it's one of the overlays you're processing, it'll be the same as the viewer. So it's telling you whether you're processing the base image that you loaded into the viewer or one of the overlays. The rest of the statistics over here are somewhat similar to what we had before, except we had the we could switch between mean and sum of the little arrow over here. We've moved that kind of out of the way down to the bottom, so now we can get the mean value or sum uh, for the region. We'll set that back at mean. This column is standard deviation. There's no standard deviation for points since there's only one value. Uh, and in this, it's either voxels. The number of voxels are the, the size. And there is no size, uh, we've not allocated size to a point, even though a point does associate with a single voxel. Um, but the line uh, is, a, is a linear measure in millimeters. All the rest of the regions are in volumes. See so the number of voxels, or the number of voxels times the size of a voxel. And the voxel size here was 0.8 millimeters on each side, so we see a fairly sizable difference between number of voxels and size here. And then the last four columns, this is currently set up to show us the max value in the region. It can also show you the minimum value in the centroid and changes the location. The reason I'm going over this is that, and that I closed the ROI inspector is that you can navigate to each of these objects now by pressing the little button on the side. And you're basically navigating to what this feature is, the centroid or the max is probably better. Max is guaranteed to be inside a region. Centroid might not be. So I've gone over quite a bit of features today, some new and some old. Let me summarize. Here we see that we now support 64 colors, correspondingly 64 regions for Mango. Looking in the viewer, we have uh, a wide and tall version of the viewer. Also, we have labels for regions. And if a region is present, you'll see it's labeled here uh, in the slice. It goes back to the center. And the last thing was the pop-up menu. And, and today we covered at the analyze capabilities and the edit label capabilities, but there's other things that can be done in the instant pop-up menu.